once again here to relieve you from Bahamas snorkel diving. After five years of building my own YouTube channel and to refit my boat along the way, the time was finally in place to set sail for my biggest adventure in my sailing career. I wanted to sail around the Norwegian Sea alone. Starting from my hometown of Haugesund, my plan was to reach all the way up to beautiful Lofoten to get into position, ready to take the big leap into the huge Norwegian Sea and hopefully make landfall on the volcanic island of John Mayen. Further on, the plan was to reach Greenland, but icing made it a little too dangerous. So the course was set to the enormous fjords of Iceland to experience the raw nature being unfolded. From here, the course was to be set into familiar waters through the Faroe Islands, Fula and Shetland before sliding along over the good old North Sea to find my berth back in Haugesund. A 2,400 nautical mile journey was completed. That's it. Since I were a child, I have always loved to be told stories. Now let me tell you mine about sailing around the Norwegian Sea. In the last episode, I sailed all the 670 nautical miles from Haugesund and up along the coast of Norway to reach my destination of Værø in Lofoten. I've always had a dream to see all the incredible places along our endless Norwegian coast. Before dropping my anchor in Mostavika on Værø, This place is also the nearest point to my next destination. Not knowing whether I was crazy or brave, I was preparing to set my bow into the huge Norwegian sea towards the wild volcanic island of Jan Mayen, 490 nautical miles away. After a quick needed haircut and an ice cold cockpit shower to wake myself up, I started heaving my anchor. I needed water and food supplies to get ready for the big offshore adventure ahead of me. So the course was set towards the little fishing community on Vareu. 730 souls live in this place and fishing industry is the main incoming amongst the inhabitants. Huge long breakwaters protect the harbor from the harsh weather that often ravages these waters. Amongst all the houses you'll find the food store about a 20 minute walk away from the guest pontoon. And to find the guest pontoon you will have to go all the way into the harbor, past all the fishing boats, the local restaurant and boat houses before we can settle inside the very well protected guest harbor, supplied with water and shore power. After securing the anchor, the wind suddenly picked up to gale force so it was the right time to leave the anchorage. Entering an unknown harbor in 30 knots of wind is always a challenge as you have no idea what to expect. 
but luckily the wind decreased as I got inside the inner brake waters, but not for long. Happily ignorant, I had left the fenders too low as a strong wind tilted my boat over when I approached the floating dock, leaving the fenders even lower. With no protection to the hull, we had a rather unpleasant impact with Vary. All tied up on the on the pontoon in uh, Barre with a big bang, as you can see. It's a lot of wind here, 30, 35 knots in the gusts, and uh, but it's a good spot to be. So just going to sit here and wait until the weather is good for uh, heading out to uh, to Jan Mayen. So I'm downloading weather reports every uh, six hours <coughs> and uh, yeah, keep keep uh, keep uh, keeping updated that way, that way. All right. Preparing for this four day offshore journey Far from any rescue, I wanted to make sure I had enough of everything. Not only for the trip, but also if I got stuck for days in a life raft. You never know. Next was setting up the hydrovane to be used as both self-steering and emergency rudder. Making sure the engine was in top shape by changing the oil. Pumping out all the water coming down through the keel stepped mast. And at last downloading the latest weather report. I wanted to do everything in my power to create that good feeling of readiness for whatever that was coming my way. Finally, after three days of waiting, the weather window opened up and I was ready to go. To be mentally prepared for these kinds of journeys is of utter importance that you trust your boat and yourself 100%. Yet, casting the lines and hoisting the sails felt weird. And the questions were many. What was waiting for me out there? Would the boat hold up? Would the conditions let me ashore on Jan Mayen? Well, as Ragnar Lothbrok said, the only way to find out is to sail there. Leaving Varöy behind, disappearing in the horizon, made things very real giving me a fresh reminder of how lonely and vulnerable I was about to become the next days. Nevertheless, it's when you leave the control in the hands of Mother Nature, when you no more have any idea of what's to come. That's when adventure starts. So with full sails, a healthy body and a strong mind, I slided into my first sunset, being very thankful to be alive and able to experience what was to come.
Good morning. Day two. Amazing weather. Downwind all night, all morning, all day. And it's going to proceed like this uh, the next hour as, uh, as well. <coughs> and uh, we're do doing a good progression. We are 130 miles on our way now. So we are about uh, one fourth part of the, of the trip. So it's uh, still a couple of days, but the weather is, uh, if it keeps up, keeps up like this, I'll be a very happy guy. So yeah, I just had some breakfast and uh, uh, something to drink and uh, my energy is uh, on top. So uh, life is good, perfect. Starting to rain a little bit. And the wind has uh, changed. It's it's coming from here now. So the foresail is blocked by the mainsail again. It's a difficult situation because it's uh, hard to feel the wind to the to the foresail. But sailing along anyway. It's amazing to be out here. It's 3,200 meter deep and it's absolutely nothing here. No boats, no nothing. Only a couple of birds looking down on me every now and then. And that's it. So I'm completely alone. And it's a special feeling. I haven't been this far offshore before, so it's for sure it's a special feeling. Beautiful. The wind has changed to uh, southerly now, so I have it straight on my beam. And uh, I had to let the uh, hydro wing go because it was uh, the course was just like this all the way, and autopilot straight line. So you can see it. You can see it here. This marks when I uh, switched on the autopilot, so you can see the hydro vane is here, and that's the autopilot. So, <coughs> it's a big difference. Anyway, uh, been sailing 200 nautical miles now, uh, entering the next night on this voyage, and uh, all is really good. Seven, eight knots, all the way. And I also wanna give a special thanks to Silva Compasses. They gave me this uh, beautiful uh, pedestal compass here. And uh, and uh, it's gonna keep me on course, I guess, all the way. So it's uh, important equipment to, to have on board. And also they gave me these great binoculars and uh, really rigid. It, uh, it's it, it's floating and it's uh, it, you can uh, manual fo focus it. And uh, it has this built-in compass with. Uh, with the light in. That's really cool. And uh, I'm gonna look uh, for land for your Mayan in a couple of days using this binocular. So it's, it's, uh, it's nice. Thank you. Sod. I'm gonna heat it up for you guys. Although I know you love cold food. Through the help of our fantastic Iridium satellite system, I had access to fresh weather reports every 12 hours covering five days ahead. In front of me, a low pressure developed pushing southerly winds gusting 30 knots. It's amazing how accurate these systems are. And just as predicted, the wind came upon me. picked up now pretty much the last uh, couple of hours it's uh, around mi midnight now 
and this is as dark as it gets, so that's nice. We can actually see the waves. So I think I'm a little bit overpowered with uh, with the main sail and uh, the head sail. So I might have to reduce it a little bit. Reefing the head sail is pretty easy, releasing the sheet, winching the furler sail, and then we tighten and adjust the sheet again. But reefing the mainsail is another ball game. Here everything happens on the rooftop at the mast. It's a dangerous place to be, crashing against the waves. I even forgot to clip on, being so focused on getting the job done efficiently. But once it's done, it's like a new boat charging faster and more balanced through the waves. Always a lot of fuss getting that sail reefed. I lost the... Uh slide uh, where you added the, the, where the, the sail enters the mast, the slide is gone now, so if I lower the sail, uh, every bit will come out of, uh, the sail will come out of the track. But anyway, that's uh, life for sure. Reaching is 30 knots now, 57, 30 knots. So we see what the night, night brings. Tough life. But I love it. Another good morning. It's day uh, three. Day three now. <laughs> Losing count. And we are 277 nautical miles uh, away from Norway and 215 uh, from Jan Mayen. So that means we are well over halfway. And that's amazing. And I've been lucky enough to have uh, wind direction that can uh, make me point my boat to Jan Mayen all the way until now, so I hope we can uh, keep on that track. And the wind has uh, fallen down during the night, so it's not more than 10, 12 knots now. And I think it's gonna turn uh, downwind again, same, and I think that's that means a little bit engine. Uh, I haven't used my engine yet. The charging uh, is what and see thing. On the stern has kept the, the batteries going all the way. So that's, that's amazing. So that's it. Just to proceed heading on. Thick fog all over us, all around us. There's not much visibility, and the wind has dropped a little bit. So, doing four and a half knots. That puts us on your Mayan uh, Thursday uh, morning now. That's good enough. In the evening, the wind disappeared and the engine got started.
time got beaten by relaxing and eating and soon the bright arctic night came upon us again. Just before midnight and we have 150 nautical miles to go now. Look at that, wow! Beautiful. So I think we're gonna have a rest and uh, go down under and eat something and uh, yeah, try to have some sleep. There's nothing out there. Not, I haven't seen any boats, nothing. Just a couple of the same birds that has been following me all the way over, I think. I think it's gonna be a quiet good night. Some wind could shut down the engine and uh, good morning. Day four, last day. We will be uh, on Jan Mayen uh, seven o'clock next morning, Thursday morning. So it's going great. 10 11 knots of wind on the nose now, so we are tacking. Jan Mayen is about here and we are going down here to have some speed on the boat. And it's cold, it's uh, we're at 71 degrees north now, so I can feel that uh, the temperature is uh, falling. It's about 4 or 5 degrees, so I had to bump up the, the heating uh, device, the, the, the bus stove, to get some real warm in the boat. Oh, that's nice. But otherwise, it's uh, all really good now. 90 miles to go, so we're really closing in now, so I'm very excited to, to see this. Can't, can't wait. Wow. guy, the open wind uh, wind anemometer has been standing tall all the way from uh, Haugesund now so thank you for letting me try it and it's hooked up to this uh, its own display via uh, a Bluetooth device and uh, it's, it's working pretty well and it's uh, to me it uh, acts like a reserve wind uh, anemometer if uh, the one on top should fail and I have backup one so happy with that really nice during the morning hours of day five the wind disappeared in total after starting the engine it was nothing else to do than recovering all the sails and make the remaining distance by engine the ocean got flat calm and I was now really getting close to Jan Mayen. Closing in only two miles away, seeing it clearly on the radar, it was still impossible to spot. I laid my course towards the incredible 2200 meter tall volcano of Berenberg as I was really hoping to have a glimpse of it. But then, out of the white shadows, the first signs of land appeared. Finally, first sight of land. Woo. All right, so closing in on the uh, Oregon city here. The anchorage is just outside, as I understand, and uh, the time is five, and uh, the station master is coming to uh, uh, welcome me at nine o'clock so I better be ready for that to so get some couple hours of sleep. 
actually pretty nice. It's foggy, you can't see anything about, but uh, the most important thing is that I'm here. I'm Jan Mayen. And even better, Ovakin City, and the weather is nice enough to go ashore today. And that's not often. That's not every day. So I'm uh, very lucky. So let's see. Let's drop the anchor and see how this goes. Securing a good anchorage at 7 meter depth, the little dinghy was made ready for landfall. I got a couple of hours resting before the clock passed 0900 and it was time to give landfall a try. Sitting in my tiny little dinghy, heading for the volcanic cliffs of Jan Mayen, a thousand kilometers offshore, in the middle of nowhere, was an incredible, intense feeling. I had to pinch myself to believe it. As I got upon the black beaches, the station master was there to welcome me. Okay. Come on, eh? He quickly saw that the waves were a bit too much yeah. and redirected me to another place hidden in between the rocks. As station master, he is responsible for the safety of everyone visiting the island. Therefore, he has the power to decide if visitors are safe to let ashore or not. Motoring carefully in between the rocks, the experience was almost unreal when it came clear that I was actually making landfall. After getting on shore, I was pretty sure I was going to be left alone to study the island by myself. That didn't turn out to be quite true. Before I knew it, I was seated in the station master's car. For an hour he drove me around all of the island, showing how spectacular this place really is. Seeing this from ground level is breathtaking in itself. But getting airborne and have a bird's view of these volcanic formations is another level of beauty. From my anchorage in Botvika, I had a perfect view towards the 378 meter tall, majestic, ridge shaped mountain of Schertz Egga. ended the sightseeing driving into Olankin city. Jan Mayen belongs to Norway and Olankin city is a military controlled radio station. I was lucky enough to meet all the 17 crews living here for six months at a time. I joined them for dinner and even got to participate in the birthday celebration for one of the crews. These were the nicest people 
giving me a lifetime memory. As the evening came upon, it was time for me to head on board again and get some much needed sleep. I had to get recharged for the next long ocean passage towards Iceland. Next morning I was ready. Time to fill up the tank again. My next plan was to proceed towards Greenland. But due to a huge, threatening 70 nautical mile wide belt of ice outside the Scorsby Sound, I decided it to be too dangerous to take on single-handed. The course were therefore set directly towards Iceland, another 370 nautical miles away. So join me next time in chapter 3 for some real and challenging ocean sailing to visit the beautiful wild nature of Iceland. I really hope you have enjoyed this episode so far. I can promise you there was much more to come. The weather is coming. So check out my Facebook and Instagram for news and updates. Support me on Patreon and get your MBGS merchandise following the link in the video description. See you soon, Eric. <laughs>